previously on Launch Control. With the first two events in the 2014 Rally America Championship complete, Subaru Rally Team USA has claimed two podium finishes, a win at Snowdrift Rally for David Higgins, and a second place for Travis Pastrana at the Rally in the 100 Acre Wood. It's an awesome first rally back. We learned a lot. Uh, I know what we need to work on for the next one, and by the end of the year, you know, I really want to be battling uh, for the leads. extremely successful test in Atlanta for the Rallycross program showed a major evolution in performance and inspired confidence in the team. The engineers, they found the sweet spot and the reliability in the motor is insane. Now the team's focus shifts to the third round of the Rally America Championship, the Oregon Trail Rally, where the goal is to get both Subarus on the podium together. There's no better person to battle than your teammate. Uh, but we're gonna have to be perfect, so it's gonna be fun. This is Launch Control. Under the warm sun near Monterey, California, the covers have been pulled off a new race car developed by STI to attack the 24 hours of Nürburgring. With a new Subaru STI back at Vermont Sports Car undergoing engineering development, Bucky Lassick and David Higgins have been invited to pour over the Nürburgring car and drive the new production STI on the legendary Laguna Seca track. You get a lot of time? On which one? I was going to do the race car. I'm set to stand twice today. STI isn't just a model name. It stands for Subaru Technica International, an entire company dedicated to speed and performance. Although Subaru Rally Team USA's cars will be radically different from the more production-based endurance racer, there are details worth examining. This is cool. Where's the missile? Where, where's the handbrake? No handbrake. No handbrake. <laughs> okay, all we need to know now is how to start it. Strip away the safety cages, the racing engines and gearboxes, and the basis of all rally and rallycross racers start here as street legal production cars. <laughs> A day lapping the track reveals familiar qualities and new improvements for what will become the platform for the next generation Subaru Rally Team USA cars. The car is very responsive. The car feels really solid, easy to drive. The curves are slippy, aren't they? <laughs> I didn't mess with those yet. I, I didn't even get it crazy. On the power, it's so stable and fraction of understeer. But if you lift up in the wrong place, it really wants to oh, come yeah, out of here and then even, all the help stops. Yeah, I didn't get there. I didn't one thing I keep it out of the dirt, one thing I learned. Subaru Rally Team USA and STI are tackling different challenges. But ultimately, the development of the WRX STI is constantly evolving through racing experience. The two teams will be learning from each other as the year progresses. In Oregon, Subaru Rally Team USA has returned for the next round of the Rally America Championship. This park expose marks the beginning of the second day of competition at the Oregon Trail Rally. Only 12 hours earlier, under the lights of the Portland International Raceway, 60 rally cars delighted fans with four short stages. David Higgins and co-driver Craig Drew set a strong pace. But it was Travis Pastrana and Chrissy Beavis who led the way with three stage wins. 
We are uh, up by four seconds here at the start of uh, day two, uh, but this is the start of the real rally stages. It's awesome to not be too far behind David though already, so uh, it's good to be leading a rally for the first time in four years again, so this is, this is pretty cool. With the previous day's short spectator stages behind them, today can be considered the true beginning of the event, with over 100 miles of gravel roads ahead. FY Racing's Adam Yeoman is first on the road, followed by the Subaru of Pastrana. This is only Pastrana's second event back in the Subaru, but it's becoming evident that a trust is growing between Travis and his co-driver, Chrissy Beavis. Higgins and Drew are next on the road. David only knows success at this event, having won all five Oregon Trail rallies he has entered, including the last three years in a row. But this morning will prove less than perfect for the number 75 car. An intermittent power steering issue is complicating their morning stages. Then, early on stage six, Higgins suffers a flat tire. Keep left through water, 80. They quickly decide to drive the rest of the stage without changing it. They lose a minute to Pastrana, but would have lost more had they stopped to change it. Don't believe this, Chuck. I know. It's okay, it's a long event. Let's just get through this. Oh, not the best start. So guys, how you doing? <laughs> At service, team manager and U.S. rally legend John Buffum's presence is evident. John has returned to working for Vermont Sports Car. He last worked for the team during Pastrana's first years with the team. 25 minutes, and then he has four minutes to make it up there. He's an active member of the crew, taking action as much as delegating. Feedback from both drivers and co-drivers provides key information. Check how much higher pressure gauge in the car against ours, because they're only at 1.4 bar of pressure. That's what I heard. And then they know about refuel in the, in the regroup. We're set there. Pastrana's clean run so far has given him the lead. For jelly, I have peanut butter, no jelly. There's the jelly. While David's woes have seen him drop to third. No, I attacked for about three corners and then there was a rock at the side of the road and the tyre went down instantly. But we did probably the last 10, 12 miles with not even a tyre on the rim at all. Just fair play to, to Method Wheels for giving us a wheel that we can drive on without a tyre. What did you do? 12, 12. I did like a 1307. Really? Yeah, look. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a pit crew, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Drivers will do anything not to get dirty. <laughs> if they would have changed the tyre, they would have lost more time. Yeah. We had a little bit of a CB boot issue. The half shaft is leaking grease all over the place. So we put a quick half shaft in it, set them back out. For Higgins and Drew, they've dug themselves a small hole. But there are plenty of stage miles left to attempt a comeback. The duo is back on the stage and pushing hard. They swiftly move up to second. Meanwhile, Travis and Chrissy are keeping it smooth and steady. It's a three-day event, and it is important to keep the car together for day three. The smooth, flowing roads of day two require commitment at higher speeds, and both Subarus are charging forward. Through the afternoon stages, Higgins accumulates one minute of time penalties for hitting chicanes used to slow the cars down. These chicanes are stupidly tight. I know. Keep the speed down now, I guess. 250. Like I said, we got all day tomorrow, long day, so let's just keep trucking and we'll see what we can do. Frustrated, they insist they haven't hit a single cone, but rather the dirt spray has been the source of the penalties. Pastrana is also hit with penalties, but only 10 seconds. Time penalties have pushed Higgins and Drew further behind Pastrana at the end of the day. 
Higgins will have to drive at maximum attack on the final day if he wants to keep his Oregon win streak alive. Forty seconds, 40 miles. That sums up the battle on the final day of racing. While both David and Travis hope for nothing but the best possible result for each other, they both also want to win. Honestly, uh, Diggins has been taking, uh, taking at least a second a mile out of us. It's just about perfect. It's the absolute nightmare for uh, the Vermont sports car guys. You know, taking 40 seconds out of a guy that's won four championships is never going to be very easy. You know, we started yesterday four seconds behind him, and now we're 40 seconds behind him. You know, who knows what we're going to see out there, but the one thing we're not going to see out there is those stupid orange cones anyway. So. If he could just uh, take out a couple more of those chicanes, you know, we could maybe add some in here and there. Oh, wait, he's first on the road, so that's not going to work. I think we had a really good shot at this, uh, but we're going to have to be perfect, so it's going to be fun. Higgins and Drew need to set a strong pace early on to erase their 40-second deficit. They need to average one second per mile faster than Travis. Pole, 100, late, left six long, 50. Travis starts behind Higgins on the road. Seeing car 75's braking points and driving lines is certainly an advantage. But on the third stage, Higgins and Drew mount an attack. They win the stage and have brought the gap down to just 10 seconds with just three stages to go. 100, okay. Good lad. I think we had about 12 off our time then. It's a good stage today, mate. Both cars return to the only service of the day. Just a little more traction, a little more power, you know, Put standard red, issue. Some red yeah, cause you're giving some weight. We're exactly where we were hoping to be in this rally, but uh, not holding on to it very well. We still got it going in the last, the last little bit. There wasn't a lot more left in there, but the car's working great today, and there's no better person to battle than your teammate. Travis knows he needs to find more speed to hold off David. If we drive our ass off, I think we still got a shot. I know it doesn't look like it. We got the two short stages. Which we like. Which we like, which we've done three past recce's on. You know what I mean? I'm just say it's possible. There's oil in it, that's good. So, both starts are aligned. Travis and David yeah. compare car telemetry. Uh, what is, is this steering input or speed? Speed, performance pro. Holy So the, to the end of this, uh, that first like third, or first quarter, Yeah. how far am I down on time was there? I just want to know if it was consistent or if I'm losing more in the middle. Both cars are close on times in the tight and twisty sections. But David finds seconds in the fast, open sections. With stage miles clicking down, the gap has tightened to six seconds. Travis is pushing. Higgins is on maximum attack and gaining. With victory in sight for both drivers and only two stages remaining, they will both need to give it their all. But the final fight is decided prematurely. Four, jump half left three. 30. Oh, that's bad. We've got a flat or something. Okay. Take it easy, Max Crest 150. Pastrana suffers two flat tires and has to limp out of the stage while recalibrating his goals. I was gonna take it easy because yeah. Adam's way back there. When it rains, it pours. Yeah. He now needs to get the car to the end and secure second place points while David and Craig complete their comeback to secure victory. No rally racer wishes to win for any reason beyond being faster than the rest. Both teams persevered through flat tires and penalties. Hey, we're both here, we're both here. Well, everybody in this team is a competitor as well. We wanted to be Travis, Travis wanted to be us. It sets, uh, sets a good precedent going forward for the rest of the year. I think we're gonna have many good battles ahead of us. I swear it was sunny just like 10 minutes ago. You know, David and Craig definitely deserved the win. They were flying. I just want to thank the phones. They really helped me out the first little bit. I'm going to learn from this guy right here and hopefully uh, keep picking up the pace and, and one day actually battle him for real. It's a 1-2 finish for the Subaru team and a 100% Subaru podium. The trek across the country, well worth it. The dominance of Subaru Rally Team USA, undeniable. But the battle of the teammates that's to be continued. You had a 
camera on this guy all day. What are you guys doing? Making your own freaking movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a bestseller. It's not going to be a bestseller. <laughs>